Hello, this is an adaptation of the Cartwright tutorial. Since the original lesson had no audio, but is going to assist those of us that like to hear the lesson at hand as well as read the notes. But we'll use a goal pointer and the actual tutorial will use a white arrow. All movement, other than the goal pointer, is done by the original lesson. This lesson is about the importing photographs. Hello, this is Bud. This Carverite tutorial deals with importing photographs. Uh, photographs can be imported directly uh, by the software and added to the workpiece using the exact same process as we discussed on importing 2D images. Uh, as before, software converts the photographs colors directly to depth. Um, the difficulty in dealing with photos is the lack of a 3D information contained on the image. Um, image uh, imagine a photograph of a Dalmatian pup standing in the snow. Most of the pixels in the photograph are nearly black or nearly white. The software interprets such uh, and the resulting pattern generated uh, contains uh, very deep area spots, nose, eyes, surrounded by very shallow areas, the white fur, fur or the snow. Since there are no color graduates uh, in the photograph, the Dalmatian's body does not look realistic uh, in the resulting pattern. Because of this, the carving uh, the Dalmatian will probably not be uh, able to get the desired result. Obviously some photographs lend themselves better to carving uh, in relief than others. In addition, the detail captured in a photograph is typically much finer than can be really, really Realistic, realistically carved. Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied. I'll be right back. I'll say that again. Small detail, especially when carved deep, is prone to chipping out when carving. Remember to keep the size and resolution of your imported photographs as large as possible for best results. Luckily, carving this image into a tr semi-transparent plastic with backlighting creates a very interesting photographic effect very similar to a lithograph. We will discuss some helpful hints for carving in plastic in the carving in plastic tutorial. Importing the carving photographs takes a little bit of experimentation and practice. You will eventually be able to recognize photos that will carve well and others that will not. The photograph, I'm just adding this, um, the photograph should be from a camera uh, without being re-scanned by a flatbed scanner. A flatbed scanner produces noise as it does its scan. What I'm saying is little flex and that kind of stuff. Those noise sections will turn out to be little pits in your carving. I'm going to click next here and come up and see what it says. We'll now quickly walk through the important process and discuss some of the important points associated with importing photographs. For a step-by-step step explanation of the import image process please see the importing a 2d image tutorial or importing image go back down here to click they're going up to file and they're going to import image from file and they're going to go pick their image JPEG or whatever and they're getting a picture an actual JPEG 
of a nice little girl here. I'm going to bring this out so you can see it. Reposition a little bit so we can read the words. To crop the image, uh, drag the corners of the yellow box wherever you want them. They'll do that in a minute. Uh, cropping is uh, usually very important when importing a photograph in order to eliminate the busy areas uh, of the dress or whatever. Um, and uh, or to eliminate the extreme bright and dark background. So I'm going to bring this back down to size and you're going to see them move their selection box to where they want it. Come down and click next. Bring it back out here in size. Again, reposition this. The translated service is now displayed in the view window. You can rotate the image to see what it will look like as far as the uh, height and depth. Pay particular attention to the eyes and the mouth. You see it's a little flaw here on the mouth. Um, as you can see, uh, some things are unnatural looking on the surface around the eyes due to the proximity of the dark pupil against the bright whites. The same effect occurs around the gums. So I'm going to reposition this again so that we can see what's going on here. And click next. And they're just tilting it around to see how it's going to look. And we've got a doctorate, that's for sure. Let's see what it says. By default, the bright areas of the photograph are translated to lower area in the pattern depth map. We can quickly invert the black and white translation by clicking the invert button right here. Okay, let's see what it says. I'll be right back. The face now has a more realistic contour in this particular photograph, but there are still spikes in the areas around the eyes and the mouth. Pre-processing the image in a graphics ma manipulation program, Photoshop or something like that, can eliminate these hot spots prior to doing this work. And by work, what I mean is prior to importing the image. So they're just tilting again to see what's going on. Ah, there they reversed it, inverted it. And we'll move this back over so we can see what we're saying here. Raising and lower functions can be used uh, if desired, but they are less useful in photographs for several reasons. First, the background is generally not one single solid color. This means that removing layers will remove only some of the pixels in the background field. Uh, you will start to see speckled appearance to the remaining pixels. Secondly, since there may be pixels with common depth throughout the pattern, you may remove pixels from the interior of the photograph that you wish to retain. Again, experiment with these options to learn the true effects on each. When satisfied with your results, click Finish button to, presume to proceed to naming and library placement. finish. Figure out where we want it. 
name it and save it okay now you can locate the saved item in your in your file and place it on your workpiece so they're going to their pattern library come down to where it's at pictures click on it highlight it and then come across and click in your workpiece tilt it see what it looks like make sure it's what you want in that respect and they're just zooming in to get a better view of what it, what is going on now they're going to come up and take away the green just to get a little better idea and we'll see what it says here the heights and depth fields are particularly important when tweaking your photograph pattern experiment with different depths and heights to get the best results because of the density of the information in the picture you will not want to increase the heights much too much height will lead to small features that are prone to tipping out uh, one other important tool to use in getting the most out of your photographs is your bit optimization which we talked about in that lesson each photograph is different but it is usually better to have the bit optimization set to high or best for photographs and that completes lesson on importing photographs.